Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dream Trip Oz the Big Lap. We have just gotten on the ferry to Morton Island. And, oh, geez, it took a while to get here. We were up at five o'clock this morning. We're staying north of Brisbane. Uh, we had to come through early morning peak hour traffic. Took us an hour and a half to get here, but we are finally here. Our ferry uh, leaves at eight o'clock, arrives Morton Island at 9.30. So it's an hour and a half, 90 minute long trip across uh, the strait and uh, I'm excited. We've just aired down. Uh, we got here nice and early. There was plenty of time while we were waiting in the queue to uh, put the quickie tire deflator on and air down. We've gone down to 18 PSI because once we get off the barge onto Morton Island, that's it. It's all sand. There's no single uh, paved road on the island. Um, Morton Island, if you don't know, is just off the coast of Brisbane, accessed from the port of Brisbane. Um, I think it's about a 37 kilometer long island, so it's nowhere near as big as Gari, but it is the third largest sand island in the world. There you go. And I think it actually has the tallest uh, sand mountain. I'll have to look that up. Hopefully we get to check that out while we're on there. But we've got two nights. We, we originally wanted three, but the barge was all booked out and we just could not make it align. So we've got two nights, we've got a lot to cram in, uh, including the spectacular Tangaluma Rex uh, for some of the greatest snorkeling I think we're going to see on this trip. Anyway, stay tuned. Plenty of action coming up. I'll, uh, once we land and have a look around, I'll run you down all of the costs because it was not cheap to do. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll see ya on Morton Island. Rock and roll. All right, so it's uh, 9.42 and we've just hit the beach. We're sitting on the barge. We've got to wait for a few cars to get out from behind us because we've got to back up before we can drive off the ramp. Looks like a pretty steep ramp uh, down onto the beach, but the beach looks quite hard. Um, it doesn't look like really soft sand on the beach, which is generally the case anyway. Normally, it's your inland roads that get really soft on these big sand islands. So I can't imagine it's going to take too long to get off the boat. And then we take a short trip, about 900 metres north, up the beach on the sand. So we're, we're an hour off high tide, by the way. Uh, or, yeah, just about an hour. So uh, we're going to have to get up to camp nice and quick, but it's only 900 metres and it looks like everybody else is headed that way anyway. The sand looks nice and hard, so off we go. I'm excited. I'm so excited. And like that, we're here. Check it out. Benoa is the name of the campground. Um, not sure what site number we're on. I'll check it out for you. Give me two seconds. So it's full. We were the, uh, there was only one site left and we are on Benoa number six, B-E. Number six. And uh, it looks nice. There's some toilets back there. I'll um, check them out a bit later after we get set up, but heaps of space for a car and our swags. Check it out. If you had a camper trailer or something like that too, you'd have plenty. Uh, quick rundown. So the barge was the most expensive part. For us, all up, return was $390. Uh, so there is an extra fee if your vehicle's over five meters long. So if you do have a town car or something like that, or a little uh, all-wheel drive, that might be your go, but um, you certainly want to make sure you've got a capable, capable vehicle for getting around on the island. Like I said, they're entirely sand tracks here, no paved roads. Uh, the camping itself was cheap, 29 bucks a night or something for a family. We're only here for two nights, but you also need a vehicle permit for driving on the island, which is another 
58 bucks or something. So you do the math on that. The 60, 60, 120 plus the barge over here. It's probably, you're not getting much change out of 500 bucks. Uh, so I reckon if you're coming, you probably want to spend as much time here as you can to make the most of it. Anyway, we're going to get camp set up. We might wait for uh, the tides to turn because high tides in about 50 minutes. Uh, we'll wait for the tides to turn and start going back out before we make our way back south down the beach. Just a couple of hundred meters south of where the barge lands is the Tangaluma Rex. Stay tuned. Ooh. We're at high tide, almost at high tide now. Look at this. <laughs> we were just driving there. We were just driving there, so it just goes to show that uh, you've got to, just like on Gari, on Fraser Island, if you haven't seen our Gari video, make sure you check it out, jump on the channel. Give us a subscribe as well, eh? Because there's plenty more of this coming up. But jump on our channel and check out the uh, the Gari trip. But you've got to be aware of your tide times. Uh, and so we made it by the skin of our teeth. We just made it into camp because uh, I tell you what, there's no road left, nowhere to drive. So it's important you want to check that because it will affect how you plan your day. You know, we're kind of, we're pretty much locked here now. I think. Well, what else do you do when you're locked in by the tides? What are you supposed to do when you're locked in by the tides, Snack. darling? <laughs> Snacks. <laughs> I say, crack a can. Ah. Oh, it's going to spill all over me, I bet you, because it's been fizzing around in the back of the car. Ah. Oh, we're good. Cheers, people. It's a pretty good life. How's this spot? Hey, <laughs> where do you see it? It's incredible. It's just at the back of the Tangaluma Resort, which you can walk. There's a walking track up here from the resort. Oh, it's a chopper taken off. There's a helipad here. This place is pretty insane. But look at this. Hey darling, why do you reckon they call it the desert? <laughs> wow, that's cool. I love it. Coming home. I'm not coming home. I am catching a bus. How cool is that? Meg was just saying she gets thirsty just looking at that much sand. <laughs> <laughs> That, hey, the tide has gone out a fair way now, and uh, we got an easy drive along the beach. Oh, it's 20 k's per hour. I'll slow down a bit. Um, but you can see in the distance now the Tangaluma Rex. How cool are they? Well, she's a bit blowy and a bit rough, but <clears throat> we're going to give it a go. We'll give this um, snorkeling the Tangaluma Rex thing a crack because it's just too good. Too good.
Their canoe to one of the wrecks and a snorkeling. Oh, no. Good idea. <laughs> well, the snorkeling was a bit of a bust today. The uh, wind was crazy and it was ripping through and just churning up all the sand, which is the story of our lives, and visibility was not great. But one awesome thing about trekking out to an island is this. That's right. Sun goes down over the ocean. Uh, yeah, it's about uh, 10 past five. We just um, shot back to camp for a minute, made up some dinner, and uh, but we've come back down to the wrecks, which is only a kilometer down the beach. And um, we're gonna sit here and watch the sun go down. Magic. Morning guys and welcome to day two of our Morton Island adventures. We've got two nights here so we've got one more night tonight and we've got uh, the best part of the day tomorrow because we don't get back on the ferry until 3pm. Uh, we are making our way north today. We're going to try to explore the northern half of Morton Island. Uh, we're headed up the west coast now because we've got a low tide or actually it's an incoming tide. High tide isn't until about 11.30. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are off the beaches by 10.30. Anyway, we're going to head north up the west coast uh, to get to the north end of the island, do some exploring across the north and make our way across to the east coast of the island, come back down the east coast, there's a few different things to see, and then in across Middle Road to get back to camp. We'll probably at some point have to find somewhere just to chill out during high tide, uh, because high tide is at about 11.30 uh, and then make our way back to camp after that. So it's going to be a full on day. I think uh, a lot of it's going to be driving because there are speed limits here on the beaches. It's not like Gary where you can do 80 k's an hour and absolutely fang it through. Uh, it's a maximum of 30 k's per hour on the beaches here. So it's a bit slower going. Anyway, We'll see ya when we get to our first stop. I think uh, there's a couple of little hikes and lookouts, so stay well, tuned. Rainbows out my window, but the rain has gone away. Wow. <laughs> it just amazes me that these places even exist. Like, uh, in the middle of nowhere, on a complete sand island, out in the ocean, an hour and a half off the coast of Brisbane, and there's a full town. There's a general store there. It looks like they got fuel too. There was a sign that said fuel, bait, ice cream, all the essentials. Cool, we've just taken the turn off. So a left-hand turn or north bound turn to North Point which will take us to Five Hills Lookout which will be our first stop today. It's a bit of a walk I think 500 meters or something like that. A nice hike up to a lookout so stay tuned we'll be there in no time. Meg's driving now so <laughs> <laughs> strap in. La, 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 la. Well, blink and you'll miss it. But we are at the Five Hills Lookout. Uh, it's literally just on the side of the road. So if 
find a spot that's safe that people can still pass. See? And a hike on up. It's a one kilometer return. It's a case of two steps forward, one step back in this sand. Ah. Now I know why they say to allow half an hour. <laughs> Ah, this is an impressive lookout. Five Hills Lookout, they call it. One, two, three, four, I don't know. Sure. I see a lot more than five hills, but anyway. We can see behind me, <clears throat> out to the North Point, there's a creek behind me, I forget the name of it, but uh, I'll look it up when we get back to the car. But out, we can, from here, we can see all the way to the lighthouse, which you probably can't see behind me. All the way to the point, oh, Cape Morton Lighthouse and all the way to the ocean or the uh, Morton Bay on the west side of the island. So a stunning vantage point from here. Magnificent. Well, that was a, a pretty deep, I don't know, maybe four or 500 mil deep um, little creek crossing there. We've just popped out at the north point. Uh, we've just got it on a track now that winds sort of between the dunes and the beach. Righto, we're at, uh, just taking the turn off to North Point Campground because there's a couple of things we want to see here. There's uh, Champagne Pools, which looks great. Um, if, you, if you've seen our Gari episode, there were Champagne Pools there too, which are pretty cool. So hopefully these ones are similar. The tides might not be right for us because we are uh, a bit late in the day. They say to come uh, two hours either side of low tide. Low tide was it? quarter to five this morning so there was no chance we were going to get here for that but we'll see might still be swimmable if not I'm sure it'll still be spectacular and uh, a little spot called Honeymoon Bay which is all accessed from uh, the North Point campground so we're just going to head in there take a look come for a ride Ah, oh, it's beautiful. A little slice of paradise. But I tell you what, it's wild. <laughs> There's a huge rip. But, beautiful. I don't think we'll be getting in the water, that's just crazy. But it is magic here. And we're sheltered, nice and sheltered out of the wind too. Got to rob a bank. I gotta get the cash flow in my hand if you can. Could you drop me to Honeymoon Bay, um, 500 meter walk from the North Point Campground. So if you're staying at North Point Campground, which there were camper trailers, tents, you could probably um, probably even get a caravan in there if you wanted. Uh, yeah, beautiful spot. Well, a bit too crazy for a swim at Honeymoon Bay. One of the many Honeymoon Bays in this beautiful country. But uh, we're going up to a spot called North Point, which is um, just back down the track a little ways. And then down to Champagne Pools, and we might be in luck there. If uh, the tide's not too high yet, we might be able to hop in for a quick dip before we head back to the car. 
and uh, keep on traveling. And if you're brawn and out of luck, take the money. Ah, so walk down onto North Point Beach and then just around the around the spit, I guess. And you come to this spot, Champagne Pools. It's wild out here on the uh, I guess it's the north eastern point of the island now. But it looks unreal. Check this out. Come on, let's do it. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, yeah, come on, fellas, do it. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh. Oh, we might be just in time. It doesn't look like it's too wild in the pools to get in and have a dip. We'll see how we go. Fingers crossed, eh? Oh geez, there's a life boy up on the hill. Which makes you wonder, doesn't it? Oh, this is pretty hectic, eh? Okay? Reminds me of Injured Up Spa sitting and waiting for the waves to come crashing over the top. <laughs> Whoa, they're a bit full on here though. Oh, here it comes. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah. Woo. Oh, it's like being in a big bottle of champagne. Another one. Whoa. <laughs> oh, geez. Wow, I think if the tide were much higher, this would be way too hectic. Oh my god! Oh jeez, it's got some power. Woo. Here on low tide, you could just hang out for eight. But these waves are getting crazy. Well, here we are. We're at the lighthouse. We're just in the car park. There's uh, toilets and an information centre and stuff here too. Now, despite my um, numerous emails and clear requests to the weatherman for uh, nice sunny weather and zero wind, we haven't got it. It's um. It's overcast and it is blowing a gale. So we'll do our best, but uh, it's not like we've got much choice. We've only got one more day here tomorrow. And uh, at the moment, the tides depict everything. Um, got to do everything by the tides. So we're going to hang out here, make some lunch too, uh, after we go check out the lighthouse. So come for a walk. So it's just gone about 11 o'clock, maybe 11.30, which means we're right smack bang in the middle of high tide. We had a couple of hours to kill before we can really move anywhere safely uh, because we're gonna make our way back down the east coast of the island, which we haven't seen yet uh, this afternoon. And then we'll use the middle road to get back across to the west side and back to camp for tonight. But uh, we're just firing up the inverter and the induction cooker and we're gonna cook up. What's on the menu, darling? Schnitzel burgers. Oh, chicken schnitzel burgers. Can't wait. That's the best thing about uh, these little off-grid, fully off-grid uh, camps away from our caravan is that everything we have is in the car. Everything. So everywhere we go, we've got all our food, fridge, drinks, everything. So can't wait. We'll dig in and uh, then we'll get moving and uh, yeah, we'll catch up with you once we're back on the road. On, hey? So this is the um, this is the east coast. Look at that. It's wild. Of course, that's the open ocean. So there's just nothing protecting protecting the shoreline from the elements here, and that is wild. That is wild. 
but it looks like, I mean, the tide's definitely going out. <clears throat> if we wait a little bit longer, we won't have to drive in the soft stuff up at the top of the dunes. And uh, we'll have a nice, clean, quick, easy run down to uh, Blue Lagoon, which is our next stop. Rock and roll. Wow. That was a bit of some uh, crazy driving. Hey, down the beach was nice and easy. Uh, we went only went about six and a half kilometers uh, down the beach before we popped into Blue Lagoon. But I tell you what, once you come in, we took the second entrance into Blue Lagoon. And I tell you what, once you come in, the sand is so soft, so soft. Uh, I reckon we burned half a tank of fuel getting in here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to go, the weather's not great. It's blowing a gale, but we're going to go check out Blue Lagoon. I can't imagine it's going to be too blue with uh, overcast skies like this, but come and check it out anyway. Right, eh? next stop, Mount Tempest. From here, we go back onto the beach, drive south, for about seven and a half k's and then pull back off the beach onto Middle Road, which is the main road that goes across the island, yeah? Uh, and then we find ourselves just along that road, we will find ourselves at a turn off that points us back up north towards Mount Tempest, which is the highest mountain on the island. And I think it's in fact one of, if not the highest sand mountain in the world. I'll have to fact check that. 268 meters tall, I think. Sand Mountain. Mount Tempest. Here we go. Let's, um. fact, let's do some fact checking <laughs> right now. So just before I do go on, we, on the barge on the way over here, at the um, cafe, they had a little stand with all these uh, brochures and things. You could buy stickers and what have you, but they had this free. Can we have a look, darling, at the map? Can you just show us the map real quick? Sure. This free map. Look at this. <clears throat> Plenty of detail, shows you where all the campgrounds and stuff are, and it's got distance markers so you can safely get yourself up and down the beaches. Tells you what's at each of the spots. Awesome map. Hey, we looked online for maps for ages to try to find something decent, and, and this one just trumps it. Anyway, Mount Tempest, here we come. I'm gonna fact check all my little comments there and I'll put them up on the screen. See you soon. That there, that's a big snake. I don't know what kind it is. Let me know in the comments if you know. Wow. There you go guys, there are snakes on Morton Island. <laughs> Alright, so we're just in the car park at the foot of Mount Tempest, or at least the start of the Mount Tempest walking track, uh, the trailhead. It's a two kilometres return, um, and they say allow two hours. Uh, it's trekking through sand and I imagine there's going to be some pretty steep parts, so uh, two hours might be pretty accurate. Um, I will do a time check before we go and I'll let you know when we get back how long it took us. Geez, some of those little snakes are hard to see, hey. I, uh, I was inches away from stepping on that. 
Got to keep your wits about you. One hand at twelve o'clock on the wheel of the car, the other resting up against the half open window. Sun bathes my skin with its warm energy. Gusts of wind ripple in and dance through my hair as I stare along the straightest road. Oh my lord. <laughs> That's better than I could have imagined. Look at this. Let's see what we can find. We will pretend we're sad. Cause it's wondrous here Wish you were here too Our life adventure Has our hearts, our families so Woo! Oh. High fives! High fives! High fives! Oh. Wow! I mean it wasn't all that bad, very steep climb through sand and a snake to dodge. But I don't know, how long did it take us, darling? Hang on. I don't think it took all that long. Jeez, it's windy up here. <laughs> I can't put the drone up, but I don't need to. We're up so high. Oh my goodness, it's incredible. The view is spectacular. I can see some massive ships out there. So it took us just over half an hour to get up here. And I expect it'll take us about the same to get back down because now we're nervous about snakes. So, <laughs> but um, wow. I mean, 360 degree views is, putting it lightly, it's spectacular. You could, uh, you could definitely on a clear day see out to Brisbane. You can see uh, the Morton Bay just here behind me. And we can see ships, container ships and stuff going through. I reckon I might be able to faintly see Brisbane in the background, but wow. If it were a clear day, I tell you what. Must be home. Must be home. We're gonna make our way back down the hillside, back to the car, and then push on to camp for the night. So, uh, fingers crossed, I don't know, the clouds might blow over, we might get another gorgeous sunset like we had last night. But I'm not going to hold my breath, eh? Hey? Anyway, if, uh, if we don't get the sunset, we'll see you in the morning for another day of adventure before we hop back on the ferry and make our way back over the mainland. So stay tuned for day three on Morton Island. Rock and roll. Well, see you later, Benawa Camp, eh? Hey? We're just going to head down the beach now, maybe have a swim and a paddleboard. At, uh, at the wrecks, hey? I think the tide's looking pretty good at the moment and uh, hopefully the wind's kept down a little bit. It's a bit calmer this morning than it was last night. Maybe we can get out for another paddleboard and have a look at these wrecks a bit closer up. Righto, we'll see you up there. Rock and roll. Ah, oh, it's much nicer this morning. Look at this. Yeah, I think this is the best day we've had.
it up, up with me in paradise. Cause I just wanna see the world. Uh, had a little, um, what do you call it, bit of burly, chucked it in the water next to his um, kayak, and now I am surrounded by fish. It's incredible. Look at this. Oh, it's amazing. Some of the parts of these uh, ships that were above water before and in a couple of hours of tide are completely submerged and I can float right over the top of them on the board where I was almost uh, standing on them when I was snorkeling. It's just uh, an underwater wonderland, this place. I'm so glad we got good weather today because um, it's really uh, brought out the best of this place. I uh, brought out the best of the Tangaluma Rex. What a spot. Unbelievable. It's just magical. The fish and the colours and uh, I guess it just, when there's wrecks and stuff to look under the look at under the water, it makes it that much more interesting too. So, unreal. we're going to get any sandboarding done today. It's just way too beautiful here. We've been snorkeling, the clarity is heaps better, the visibility is heaps better today in the water. Uh, it's much calmer. The wind <coughs> uh, feels as if it's blowing from the east, which means this area out where the wrecks are, out um, off the beach, is a bit more sheltered from the wind and it's made a huge difference. The vis the clarity, the visibility in the water is sensational. The snorkeling is magnificent. The fish, the everything, oh my God, you gotta get here. This is great. I'm so glad 
we've got this extra day here. Um, the ferry is coming and we are jumping on it at three o'clock this afternoon, but I don't know, it's, I don't think it's even midday yet. And uh, we've just had the best morning here, snorkeling uh, and paddle boarding around the Tangalooma wrecks. What a spot. Wow, well, we got packed up just by the skin of our teeth because the, uh, the barge is here. It's, um, it's only 2.30, so maybe it takes them half an hour or so to get all the other cars off and uh, get us on. Tell you what, if we had weather like this the first two days, we probably would never have left this beach. <laughs> it's, uh, it is awesome. The snorkeling here is fantastic. Um, get over here. Well worth the money. I will say it was pretty expensive. It, did, it was quite costly to get over here and back with the car and camp. Um, but the beauty of having your car is you've got everything with you. All your snorkels, your paddle boards, your, all of that. So you don't have to hire stuff and uh, you can make the most of the place, get around and see it all too. If you came across as just a passenger, you'd probably be pretty much restricted to this beach, uh, the wrecks and this area. You might be able to make it up to the desert from here but it'd be a fair hike um yeah worth it definitely worth it wow that my friend brings us to the end of our epic morton island adventures uh please make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned because we got heaps more adventure coming up when we get back to the mainland uh quick one hot tip if you've got nothing to do and you're on the boat, keep your car running once you get on and bump your air back up. Put your tyres back up to road pressure, eh? Right? Everyone's doing it, so I better get amongst it. Each new horizon goes on forever. Let's see what we can find. Cause it's wondrous here